Today is November 20th, 2014, and we are interviewing Mr. James B. Morrison at the Anna Veterans Home in Anna, Illinois. Mr. Morrison was born on March 4th, 1920. My name is Cheryl Walker, and I'll be interviewing Mr. Morrison. Angie Bunch will be the court reporter for this interview. Mr. Morrison, where in, were you born? The Soda, Illinois. Yeah. So was born in Yeah. Okay. And who were your parents? Huh? Who were your parents? Uh, De uh, Blake Morrison and Della Morrison. Uh, my mother died when I was 10 years old. And my dad raised me, and, and uh, my brother, he was two years younger than I. And uh, uh, back then, it was rough times, too, back at that time. Yeah. I went through that tornado that went through there, and I was five years old. I, uh, I was across the street and talking to a lady that I knew all my life. And she she was good to us kids. She'd give us, you know, cookies and things. And we we uh, we'd always be going to see her. And that day it got very cloudy. And uh, I sent uh, I told her I said it's going to rain. I better go home. And she said, Oh, you just stay here with me. It's getting dark. I said, No, I'd run home. And I went around the house. My mother was fixing the gathering to catch water into the cistern. We didn't have a well in the cistern. And we went, she said, I said, Mom, it's going to rain. She said, yeah, we better get in the house. Went through the kitchen and the dining room. We got in the living room and the window blew out. And she says, uh, my brother, like I said, he was, he was just two years younger than me. He was two, two years old. Well, three years old, almost three. And he, she said, Go in the bedroom, get on the bed, that feather bed in there with your brother. And uh, said, I'll be right in there. And she said, I told her to go get on top of us. And she got on top of us and it hit. Blew everything away. The walls, floor, just the floor left. And blew me over in the next lot. I got a gas on my head there, scarred yet. And I left, my left arm broke. But, uh, my mother's just got a few splinters in her bottom. My brother got a bloody nose. But you know what was odd? We had a pen on the living room. There was no walls. The whole house was tore away, and that pen is still sitting there. How <laughs> How old were you when you? Five. No. How old were you when you went into the service? I was uh, 21. Okay. I, I had to register when I, you know, I was 20, 21, yeah. and. Uh, yeah, I came, I went in November the 23rd, and I came out uh, uh, November the 27th, uh, four years later. And you were drafted? I drafted. Well, back at that time, you didn't have much of a choice. You know, you either, you had a volunteer, or you are going to take you anyway. Yeah. Do you remember where you took your boot camp at? Oh, yeah. Where was that? Camp, uh, Camp Wheeler, Georgia. Macon, Georgia. That's where I took my basic training. I was there till February. Then went out to to uh, Fort Lewis, Washington. And uh, I was just so while and went down to San Francisco and boarded the ship. And on April the 23rd and 42, I set sail. And went to Australia first. Did you, what ship were you on? The Argentina. There's, there's 5,000 of us on it, a ship besides the crew. We're getting two meals a day. I think it was 23 days it took us to go down there. Yeah. And after you went to Argentina, Austria, 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 Australia, Australia. Australia. Yeah. Um, where did you go? Well, with New Guinea. They said they took us there because the Japanese were coming in and 
New Guinea, see, and then next they come right in, it would be just next door to Australia, see. And a lot of their troops were uh, in, uh, I don't know just where they were, South Africa or someplace, a lot of the Australian troops. And they did have some up in in the part of New Guinea, and then, then we went, that's where we went. And we went up there, and there was, I think we were there about six months, and then we come back to Australia just for recuperation for just a short while, and then we went back, back again to the island again the rest of the time. Yeah. I was in uh, Mizanao. Uh, I'd had a uh, dysentery, and uh, I was just getting over it. And uh, we had, I went down to about 130 pounds. And uh, uh, I've got what I thought I was talking about right now. But anyway, uh, uh, the nurse told me, she says, uh, uh, they're going to have a movie outside tonight. If you feel like it, you can go out there. And I said, well, I'll, I'll try it. So I went out that night, and uh, I said, uh, they said, we may have some good news before it's over. And I said, hey, about the movie was over, while the light came, one light they had up there come on. They said, they just dropped a big bomb on Japan, and said they, they're wanting to surrender. Man, all heck blew loose around. There were guns being he had to shoot and everything. There's people coming in there getting the stray bullets and everything. But uh, that's one. Of course, I, I remember that real plainly. Because my next, our next, but Japan, that's what we was headed for. We was getting supplies and everything getting ready to go into Japan. Did you make it to Japan? No. <laughs> no. I, I, they, they put us on a ship, started us home, and uh, got around to Leyte, and they pulled into Leyte and unloaded us. They wanted the ship we was, we was on to take troops into Japan. And, uh, but uh, no, we were, all of us guys, you know, at that time, was, had a long time over there, had all that time, see. And I never was home from the day I left to the day I got back. Never had a furlough home. Besides New Guinea, where else were you? That's what I was on Biak in the Shoten Islands. And uh, uh, had the option even all the caves and the, up there they done and there they was they had advantage on us by you know through the daytime then they try to work at us, at us at night but uh, but uh, that there was well, it was rough there. Now <clears throat> did you were infantry? Huh? You were with the infantry, the army oh, yeah. infantry. Yeah. Did you have like base camps to go to? No, no, no way. We was just an island, you know, whatever, until uh, we get things kind of set up where we could put a camp up and then, then we go. Yeah. Uh, I was a section sergeant and motors. I had three motor squads. And, uh, but, uh, I had first day uh, when I got my promotion they, to staff sergeant. They took me into the rifle squad. I had a rifle squad, but I'd been in mortars before, and they knew I knew mortars. And uh, and the section sergeant mortars got killed, and I didn't get killed. He got wounded, and uh, so they called me back to take his place because I knew mortars. And so, so as a mo motors yeah um, sergeant yeah, what did you do? That's what I say. I directed the fire for the motors with uh, the lieutenant to tell me where I'd be with the lieutenant, and he he'd tell me where he wanted to fire. Then I'd call back by phone, and, would, and uh, that's where we put the fire in. Yeah. So you were up front. Oh yeah, yeah. I was up with the uh, with the lieutenant. And my three squads were back there, and I'd give orders on one gun, and they'd all follow it with it. And so when, when they, if I say close on two, I, they did one and three, to close on and two, and then they don't fire so many rounds they and kind of wipe out around wherever they was hit. 
Yeah. Do um, as a rifle um, staff sergeant. Yeah. What did you do? Well, that's what I say. I was I was a, uh, was a leader, and I was over the the, the three guns. See, I gave the orders to the guns. And what guns were they? The motors. You drop. Mortars. Yeah. Okay. Mortars. Yeah. Okay. I misunderstood you. Yeah. I thought you said motors. No, mortars. Mortars. You know, you think. Now I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you drop them in. <laughs> you drop them in. And, yeah. I give them mortars and I give them the range and everything, you know, and the, and, uh, the direction they shoot. We always have it lined up and we know where to go from. When I got up and I had the orders, I give them orders, they'd fall through, and then someone in the round. Did did you guys get shot on? Huh? Did did you get shot at? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Had some folks. They got you know they got they got. It was close calls. Yeah. Had a, what's the reason I made a, in my life was going over on the boat and we had us in a room where we slept and there's about 500 in this little room. It was a theater in there at one time and they had beds up and there's about six, six. There'd be a pole here and these beds would fold down from it, you know, and uh, be about six behind. And I was about the third one. And a boy stepped on me going up on the top, and I, I said, Jesus Christ, I'm sure where you're stepping. And this boy across the street, across the hall, right, I mean, that aisle from me, uh, he's a young fellow, and he, he was small and everything. He said, Jim, just couldn't you said something different than that? It made a difference in my life. Uh, we called him Deacon after that, and I don't care if an officer who it was, if they got it out of line like that, he correct them. And uh, he was scared of nothing. And he went out on patrol one day, and he's talking about wiping out the machine gun there. And then he, he uh, they said it was going out the next day and he volunteered to go again. And he got killed. Mm -hmm. Did you make any good friends? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll never forget. Did you keep in contact with them? Best I couldn't. I'll tell you, see, when uh, coming uh, back three days out of San Francisco, uh, I had uh, attacked my kidneys, uh, uh, kidney stone, and uh, when I got off, they took me off on a stretcher, and my barracks bag with all my addresses, everything, was in the bag, and there was about uh, about a month or whatever. When I got home, there was nothing in it, but just at that time I smoked a little bit, and uh, some stale cigarettes, and. Uh, pair of shoes and some old jean, blue jeans, well, wrong with jeans, and, uh, uh, but, uh, I, as I say, lost all, and like peace out people in Australia that I knew, I, was, I met there, you know, and, uh, so. Did you keep a diary? No, no, no. Uh, Were you allowed to? Oh, I, I don't know. I never thought about it. Never, no. What about writing home? Could you write home? Oh, yeah, but it's restricted, you know, what you can say, where you're saying, and anything like that, so it just might as well almost not write it. Yeah. Did you ever, after you came home, did you see any of those letters that you wrote and how they oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. blacked them out? And just short letters is all I'd write, you know, that's the best that letters have. So, I had an old girlfriend, a girlfriend at that time, she, she wrote me a letter about every day. 
and I when I get my mail, a lot of the guys wouldn't get no mail, but that Morrison, 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 and uh, of course before I got home, she gave me a dear John, <laughs> which was the best thing she ever could have done because I met the woman of my dreams you know, when I got home and uh, for 64 years and uh, she. Uh, she was just up this in Dakota, and I just got home from the army, and I was, I, I was, uh, I'd go to town in the morning and go to the post office, and and uh, I was waiting, I was waiting by barracks bags, where I was, and uh, uh, we went to the restaurant with a friend of mine, and we sat in there, and I saw this girl go by, and I said, asked him my friend, I said, who was that? He said, I don't know. She said, he went up our way. So I went to the ball game that night, and I looked up in the bleachers, and there she was. She was with a lady that I knew all my life. And uh, so the next morning, I went to the post office. I saw this lady, and she, I went over, and I said, Mary, who's that pretty girl with you last night? Up there? She says, now hold on here. Something funny's going on here. And I said, what do you mean? So she was asking about you. So a year later, we were married. Yeah, we. She asked me if I wanted to meet her, and I told her, yeah. And uh, yeah. So uh, that's the way we got together, and couldn't have been better, no better. I can always say it: if there's a perfect marriage, if there's a perfect marriage, I had it. Congratulations. I did. <laughs> my brother, my dad, uh, he don't say thing all the time. And until I got married, and he got married. Uh, a year later, uh, he got married. But uh, he said, uh, he had always said he'd never get married as long as one of his, the kids was single. And my brother said, I wish I knew that. <laughs> he was married four times. He was much different from me the daylight and dark. He had, he, he liked to take a drink, and I never did drink, and uh, uh, he he and the honky tonks. He liked to dance. He, uh, but uh, I loved him to death. But he, you know, he's getting back to the uh, the time in the army. What did you eat? Did you eat K rations? Or? Yeah, K rations. Yeah, and uh, it's different. I never ate, I ate a lot of rice. Did you eat a lot of rice? No, they picked rice every way you think of it. Was. Oh, man. Do you still eat rice? I like rice just like if you're going to cook for breakfast or something like that for a cereal. Yeah, that's, a, that's about the only way I care for it. Is there anything else you won't eat because of the service? Well, no, I don't think. Of course, I never did like, I don't like fish. At one time, I had an outpost, and a river run out into the ocean there, and uh, fish would come in there, eating off the stuff out of this river, and we'd throw hand grenades in there, and shock them, and they come up, and, and I'd take them. They'd clean them, and I'd, I'd fry them up for them, and the old hard tack crackers and roll them in them, you know, and fry them for the, and we had some kind of canned butter or margarine, you know. To prime in. And they smacked their lips and ate it, man. I couldn't eat them. No, no. No, I ate a lot of Vienna sausages and uh, cheese. The Australians, they have cheese. We trade them cheese. And at one time, we found a, where they had a bunch of crackers and stuff, they had some big tins. And uh, he find one with a polypyrid on it. It was a good soda crackers, but the other was a little hard tag. And so we find one of them, and then trade the Aussie some uh, cigarettes or, or uh, cheese <laughs> and tea, uh, tie as they call it. But uh, how was the water? The water was good. Uh, they, you know, the first they wanted us to go without water. They tried to teach us to go with just two canteens of water a day. And uh, but when we got up there, you could dig down in the sand 
and it was just good water. Yeah, it was good water then, New Guinea, in New Guinea, yeah. What about in the Philippines? Oh yeah, we it was okay there, yeah. You know, it's amazing how them women could take and clean clothes, just beating them. Go down and sit down in the water, you know, and beat them clothes and bring them to them. They just, down the clothes would be white, just as white as they can be. Did they clean your uniforms? No, no. Yeah. Just, well, uh, uh, or just a regular, regular clothes, you know. Right? But of course, we didn't have the dress uniforms up there. No, we didn't need them. So you got to mingle with the natives? Only some, yeah, some, yeah. Did you, well, you can tell you, you would want a coconut, you know. You give them a cigarette and they go up that, up that, and kick them out there. And then they cut the top out of that coconut tree and where the new sprouts are coming out and cut that heart out. It tastes just like a turnip. Yeah. Did they open the crack the coconut yeah, for you, or they, did they, you? No, they crack it. It's, it's kind of to me. It's, they knew how to do it. They knew to get you know get the milk. And, yeah, yeah. Was that pretty good? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. What other memories do you have? Oh. Uh, the, the good memories was while I was there in Australia. I'd like to roller skate, and I went to roller skate one. He went up there. Well, I said the town of Rockhampton, the thirty thousand population. Between there and the, you know, they call it was the town of Yapoon, it's twenty miles away, down this road. And on each side was wooded area, and then they put up a kitchen all ever so often. And there was sixty thousand soldiers there down that line. If you got town, you better get, get your ticket to go to church or something, you know, or go to a show, you know, or something. But while I said roller skating, I was, I was sitting there putting my roller skates on, and a little girl said, I can't get no chewing gum over here. And I said, you can't? And she said, no. I said, would you like to have some? And she said, sure would. So I'll give her a whole pack. Yeah. And then on, I'd go there. I'd, I'd be skating, and she, she come to get a hold of me. I was skating around. She's just, she's just a little girl. She's all, I guess she's about 12, uh, 12, maybe 10 or 12 years old. So I went to the, when I went to New Guinea, I come back up there to recuperate for just a short time. And I went back down to skating. There, put my skates on, and uh, we can't get no chewing gum over here. <laughs> and she remembered me, you know. And, but uh, then uh, uh, we found a place we could eat out in the suburb, and uh, they had fried chicken out there, and so, and some get the ladies. And, but uh, we were, uh, a friend of mine, it was, we was always together, we were going together, and, and uh, we was walking around the suburb. You couldn't hardly, as I say, you couldn't find a place to stay in there over the weekend. And uh, there's uh, some people, an old fella, old fella, and his wife, and they're working in the yard. And they stopped us, and talking to us. She was saying, "What a fine looking bunch of young men, American soldiers were, you know, and all this." Thing. And we told them we was uh, you couldn't hardly find a place to stay, and that's how we liked around there. And we told them that, and. Uh, she says, well, we got, a pet, we got a bed on our porch. I said, you'd be more than welcome to it. And uh, so we started going, we go on the weekend, well, that's where we go. And uh, we'd offer to pay for them. They wouldn't take anything, but we'd get things from PX that they couldn't get or something, you know, we'd take it to them. And, but, oh, they were nice. That's what I was afraid. I lost their address, too, see. And uh, then, Another time, in Sydney, uh, there was uh, four of us down there together, and uh, these two boys 
and the two boys were, well, there's three of us instead of four. And uh, there's two boys, they, they drank and I didn't. And I said, you two guys go on your way, I'll go my own way. So uh, I went to uh, uh, the person, that person I was out, that's when I told them that. And then the next night I said, well, I'll stay in. I, what do you got? I'll be someday. I was, I was going to go to the theater and see, see the show that night. And I went down the street and, and I saw Penny Arcade. And I went in there to play at that Penny Arcade. And two young men come up and talk to me. And they just asked me about the States, you know, and everything, all of and Quist even. Then a young lady came up there. And uh, she, she, she started talking to me. And while I said, well, I'm going to go to theater. If any of you would like to go, uh, I'll take you. Well, the two boys said they had out of the plans, and and but they appreciated it. And, and then this little girl, this girl with her, and I said, "Well, how about you?" She said, "Oh, said my mother and dad said they don't care too much for the GI. Yeah, some of them are third drinking carried on." And uh, I said, "Well, you can't judge them all if you watch the mother do." And her son, she said, "You know, you're right." I said, "I'm with you." So we went to the theater and she talked, talked, and about all the time I was in there, she was talking, I didn't know, obviously the movie, and uh, as I got out, I said, uh, well, could I see you home? She said, no, better not, and uh, so I got her cabin to her home, and she says, uh, I said, well, I guess I won't see you no more. She said, well, if you like, I'll show you around Sydney, and I said, well, it'd be nice, but how will I see you? She said, well, do you say you'd stay in the Windsor Hotel? Said, uh, the tram stopped right across the street and said, on the corner, said, I'll meet you there at five o'clock tomorrow evening. So I met her and I said, well, what would you like to do? Go get something to eat? And she said, no, I'm gonna go out my house. I said, out your house? I thought she'd be your books in. She said, I told my mother about it. She said, Mom says, if he was so damn good, why don't you bring him home? <laughs> <laughs> so we went back out the house and I met her at Pope. And from then on, they were just nice to me as they could be. And uh, from then on, I was there for seven days. And we uh, went to amusement park and we went roller skating, ice skating. And we walked the beach. We, we went to, uh, uh, well, just every little place we could find to get to go. And until I got ready, we got to leave. I said, I was going to have to change. She said, could I go with you? And I said, uh, sure, I said, you can go. And she said, uh, she met me, she told me she'd meet me there. And uh, so we went out and we were waiting on the train. Of course, she was talking. She said, I had to hate to see me go. She says, I hope your girlfriend realizes what she's getting. That's for my girlfriend and give me a dear John, see. And, uh, and uh, I said, well, thank you, thank you. She said, you know, I could usually fall in love with you. That's what she told me. And uh, I said, oh, you'll find some young man here. And one of these days, and of course, if things had been turned around, his life had been the other way, see, I'd like to <laughs> with her, you know, man. but uh, hmm? that's just what I say, step come back to the good part, while I was there, down there. but the rest of it was, was rough. Do you remember the little girl who asked you for gum? Do you remember what her name was? No, I don't. Uh, this girl that, that, I, that I saw was Thomasina Beckett. Thomasina Beckett. The little girl, she wrote my, my niece off a long time. My niece was about her age, you know. I give her her address and they, they, they can't correspond with probably a good little bit. And her daddy worked at a racetrack, a horse racetrack, and she gave me some tips on horses. That might be some good. <laughs> uh, yeah. What was the weather like? And uh, what was oh, the weather? Oh, it, it's beautiful. Up where we were at, it was like, like you're down Florida. And the northern part, see, is 
that way and it's cooler in the south. We went into Melbourne, it was kind of cool. We, it'll rain, it was just chilly, you know, and we'd have to, we had little stoves like that in, in the tent. And, uh, but uh, up in the north, and all kinds of fruit, birds, beautiful birds, all parrots fly, you know, of course they're smaller parrots, and uh, the cockadoos, there's one, <laughs> Our first sergeant had a white cockadoo, and uh, the whole thing that thing would say was, I want a mug of beer. <laughs> That's all I did have to say, is, I want a mug of beer, I want a mug of beer. <laughs> yeah. Did you cross the equator? Oh, yeah. Did, oh, yeah. Oh, on, yeah. Oh, on the oh, ship? Uh, yeah, uh huh. And did you, were you a polywog before? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> A boy, a poly. A polywog? Did they have a ceremony for you? Oh, they had ceremonies, yeah, on there, yeah. But, um, okay. Yeah. Um. When, when your time in the service, when you came home. Yeah. Where did, where did the ship take you to? I came home. I came from, uh, I left uh, um, the Philippines on September the 10th, 1945. And uh, I got, uh, I think it was 15 days, we was on the ship then come, coming back down to, to San Francisco. And they put me in the hospital and then uh, after after I left the hospital, they took me out in the, the bay of San Francisco on a little island. They, I was on the ferry, they went by uh, Alcatraz. At that time, they, they take school, school children there and let them off, you know, in the evening, and that's where it happened. When I was on there, the school children was on there, uh, these guards, you know. And uh, I was out there, and then I left. Kim, Come a train then after we by San Francisco on be on a train and then come come back to Jefferson Barracks in St. Louis. Did your family meet you there? Yeah, but you know, uh, they came up there to get me and uh, I left out of, uh, to go in another barracks to to uh, I was, they had iron over there, I was on iron my pants and uh, they come looking for me and till I, I come out got to looking I saw the car the, a car out there I saw a paintbrush and I knew my dad was a painter and so I was waiting the person I saw him up come up there but they come back to my barracks this barracks and asked about, about me they said that I was there but uh, they'd been told I was there and they got there and they said, no, said, this guy told them, said, I think he went down to beer garden. And well, now my dad and them knew better, knew I didn't drink or nothing. Or he thought I didn't anyway. And, uh, but, uh, uh, it, was, it was another guy that they, he thought was the one he, they was right looking for. But, uh, but I saw them. But, uh, you know, they, Got my everything checked out, but one thing about some money that they'd owe me back, and uh, I had to stay over another day and let them come home and come back and get me the next day. Yeah, I was all that time. Yeah. What did you do after the service? I didn't do anything for a little while. Yeah, and, and then uh, I started working for my uncle then. Uh, doing carpentry work, building homes, and uh, of course then I, I met my wife, you know, and uh, my uncle, uh, he was a little, uh, he was a little cranky, and, uh, and uh, so I said, I left him, and uh, my wife said, uh, well, you're not working this Saturday, let's go down home, visit the folks. So I said, okay, so we went down. While we was there, my brother-in-law told me, he said, 
we were just going to spend the weekend, you know. And he said, stay over to Monday and we'll go down to Carroll and go to work. Get a job down there working for Sears and Roebuck building prefab houses. I said, okay. So we went down there and they said they'd hire one that week and the other in the next week. So I said, well, I'll take him this week and I'll, I'll come back until next week. So I gave me a chance to move down. So I moved down down there then. I'd, uh, I'd worked for about two years and I went to work on the railroad and I worked for 32 years on the railroad. And that's, that's where I made my, made my life living. Now you said that you had um, one daughter. Yeah. And um, and so it was your wife and your daughter. And um, when did your daughter come to live with you, or to be with you? I don't know the date just right now, but uh, as I say, she was ten years old. Here's the whole thing. Her, her mother, I had her from the time she was 13 till she was 16, I mean 19, and she got married. And then she had children, which is this offspring. And so uh, her and her husband, finally they, they got a divorce. And uh, so she called me then one time, she asked me if I'd take Brenda and raise her. And I said, sure. Well, when I said that, her, her other sister, who's 11 months older, she said, I want to go too. And I said, send them over. So they sent them, but finally Donna wanted to go back home. And I said, okay, but you can't come back. Because I put got clothes for them and everything, and started school and everything. And uh, but then, it was a good while later, Brenda and Donna was raised corresponding all the time, and she was telling me, they said, she, Donna was saying they had a good time. And then Brenda said, Dad said, I think I want to go back. And I said, well, I'll tell you just like I told Donna. If you go, you can't come back. And so I told her, mother and mother said, no way. She don't, if she don't want to stay there, she can go live with her daddy. That was hard, and uh, so her mother got a hold of her daddy and told him, and he called me, and he was going to come get her. He said when school was out, I said, "You come get her now. You don't, you don't." I made, it. and the next day, he, next day he called back and said he thought she was better off where she's at, so that's where it ended, and. Uh, she don't have no, nothing to do with none of her folks. I hate that because she got brothers and sisters, but they don't try to get in touch with her. So, but uh, I couldn't love her more. She's my flesh and blood. She's a wonderful girl. She went to college. She, she's a nurse, a registered nurse. And uh, she, uh, she works for us. Fam, what they call a family nurse. They uh, went in England. She started working for them at the base where that. Her, her husband's a chaplain in the Air Force. He's a colonel. And, uh, uh, but uh, she started working for them over there. She liked it. And then they went to Germany. And she went to work for them there. They went to Okinawa. She worked for them there. Went to block the Mississippi, and they didn't have them down there. But the job opened up in San Antonio, which uh, uh, her son was in college down there, her oldest boy. And so she went to put a stay with him, and uh, Cliff was, he was going to see about retiring. And uh, then he found out that there was going to be a job open in San Antonio, so he held on and he got the job. So he's there, she's got the job, her job there, and everything. Her oldest son just got out of college. Uh, her next son, he just went in college this year. And she got twins, a little boy and girl, 15 years old. And so they got a wonderful family. 
good jobs, nice home, they built them a new home down there. They wanted me to come live with them, but I didn't, I didn't want to leave my home and go. I appreciated it more than anything. But I wouldn't know anyone else, you know, down there up besides them. So. Well, at this time, Mr. Morrison, I would like to thank you yeah. for serving our country. Yeah. And I would really like to thank you for honoring me the time and gi giving me the honor of um, interviewing you today. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.